All right, guys, the cylinder is back from being bored and plated. Looks in good shape. Alex has broken his leg in a football game. He was catching a pass. He did catch the pass, though, so that's good. But he won't be helping me today. He's hobbling around with a splint on his leg right now. He's got a couple months to recover. But he's wanting me to get this thing fixed, and I want to get it fixed, too, because it's taking up room in the garage. So let's look at the parts that I've got uh, that we're going to be installing today. Okay, to start, we've got a clutch bracket, a brake handle, the throttle grip, and all those are busted. I'll just be replacing those. We have got a new cylinder head. Uh, I'll talk about a little bit more about why I've got a new cylinder head in a minute. We have got the cylinder back from the platers. Looks like a brand new one. Got the old stuff back here. None of that will be going back in. We've got a new piston ring, new needle wearing, new Wiseco piston, gasket kit, and all the old hardware off the old cylinder that we'll be reinstalling on the new one. So let's take a look at this Wiseco piston in a little more detail. So I've chosen to go with a Wiseco piston. A lot of you out there may say, well, you should have went with a Vertex or you should have went with a stock unit. They're probably all fine. I chose to go with the, the Wiseco for several reasons, um, but it is a forged unit. The stock unit is a cast unit. I believe one of the reasons that Honda chose, chooses to go with a cast unit is because they're a cheaper manufacturer. Um, there's a little more to forging uh, a piece of metal than there is to casting a piece. Also, Motorsport sells these as a kit that has everything you need in it. The kit is a little more than a stock unit. If you used to go with stock unit, you're going to save about $10 from what I calculated. If you get all of the parts that go in the kit that comes with the Wiseco. Now, you could save yourself a couple bucks if you choose to reuse the, you know, the wrist pin or the, the needle bearing or the, the clips. Uh, obviously, I think you're going to want to get a new ring. But all that's included with the, the Wiseco kit, and that's one of the reasons why I choose, choose to get it, because it's just got everything in there that you need. So let's see what comes in this box. So Wiseco comes with this little bag. If anybody knows what a good use for these little bags, that'd be great. I mean, it's a neat little bag, but I mean, what do you need it for? It's useless. So here's the piston itself. Like I said, this is forged. One thing to know about these, when you're putting them in, there's a direction. You could really put it in this way or this way. I don't think there's anything physically stopping you from doing that, but there's a little arrow on here which points towards the exhaust side. Also, you'll note there's two little holes here that's used to uh, lubricate the bridge and the exhaust. You've got your circlips, wrist pin, and cool stickers. There's also a little instruction manual in here. I think it tells you about setting the ring gap, which is something I'm gonna do before we put that in, but I think that's in this manual here. Anyway, that's what's in the box. Let's start putting some stuff together. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is putting the cylinder head studs in. The way you do that is you double nut them. Put one nut on backwards, upside down. One on the regular way. Tighten them against each other. And you can run it down in. All right, I've got all the head studs in. Now I'm gonna put the exhaust power valve in. Starts off with the bushing, which goes in the far end over here. The valves go in like this. And there's a little bearing, and this whole assembly fits through. All right, I finally got the power valves back in. Uh, there's a little difficult uh, part here. There's a little dowel pin right here that serves as a stop or where those go to in the low RPM position. Had to pull that out of the other 
uh, cylinder and it was extremely hard to get out. It took a blowtorch and a cube of ice. So you heat it up the cylinder and then I had to cool down the pin itself before I could get it out. And even then I had to have a pair of uh, vice grips and uh, very difficult to get out. I cleaned it up before I put it back in. So hopefully the next time I have to take it out, it won't be as difficult. So I've installed the exhaust flange with the new gasket and put the water elbow on. So we've got one last little task to do before we put the piston onto the connecting rod. We've got to gap the ring and we'll use the piston to square that up in the cylinder bore. Okay, we're gonna gap the ring. So I've got the ring out, we've got the instructions. The instructions call for four thousandths of an inch gap per inch of cylinder bore. This cylinder is just over two inches, so we're looking at about eight thousandths gap. The ring is also non-directional. It, it can go in upside down or right side up. There's no real direction to it. So we'll put it down into the bore. And then use the piston to square it up. Take a feeler gauge to eight thousandths, put it in the gap if it fits. That does fit, so I'll see how big it is. I'll go to the next size up nine thousandths. It still fits. Let's go to the next size, ten thousandths. Okay, it's just a little tight there. So if anything, we're a little big. Now, this is just a trail bike, so I'm not real concerned about ultimate power. But if if you're really concerned about power, you may want to actually get another ring. Um, and get one that's a little closer to eight thousandths. But uh, with ten being a little tight, we're at about nine thousandths. We're going to go with that. So no need to adjust the gap on this ring. So before I go over to the bike to put the piston on the connecting rod, I'm going to put one of these circlips on. Um, these things are a little difficult to get in over on the bike, and you take a chance of dropping it down into the crank or flying everywhere. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get one put on and then we'll put the other one on over on the bike. Okay, we're over to bike now. Uh, sorry about the light, it's not the best, but I've got some assembly lube that I'm gonna lube up the wrist pin and uh, needle bearing before I put the, the piston on here. If you don't have any assembly lube, some regular two-stroke oil would probably be just fine. You just don't want things to be dry when you start it up. Like I said, you want to be sure to get this in the right direction to where the exhaust arrow is pointing to the exhaust. We just put the clip in on this side and that's that. Okay, we've got the reed cage back on with new gaskets. Now I've got to feed the carburetor back down through and get it back in place between the intake boot and the air filter box. I finally got the carburetor in place. That thing is in a really tight spot. There were a few curse words said as I was getting it into place. Couldn't get the, the rear box on. And then when I finally got it on, then the front came loose. It's not fun to, to deal with that. Even with the, the cylinder out, it really still is in an extremely 
tight spot there, not fun. So I've cleaned off the surface of the case, put on a new base gasket, and coated the piston in a nice little thin layer of assembly lube. Now I can put the cylinder on. So I've got the cylinder back on and I'm torquing the nuts. This nut in this power valve requires an adapter. So this is the adapter that's used. This Motion Pro makes this. Uh, they have a calculator on their website that you use to determine how to uh, calculate the torque that it's given. You can't use the torque that you're dialing up on the torque wrench. You have to adjust that by this formula. It's fairly simple. You multiply two numbers and then divide by a number. Um, this one happens to be, I think, 183 inch pounds is what we're tightening these to. Um, and I'm just using the adapter on all of them. That way we make sure the torque is the same on all four. Now I just reconnected the power valve. Just a little lever over here on the right. As you can see, I'm missing our clip. So I just use a little bit of bailing wire in there. Should be fine. Okay, now that I got the cylinder on, I want to stop for a minute and talk about cylinder replating. I had a company uh, from Wisconsin do this called Millennium Technologies. And they do really good work. When this thing come back, you know, it, it looked like it was a brand new cylinder. Um, and they can repair, you know, huge gashes in there. They can take it, weld it up, bore it out, and then replate it. But the cost of doing so for a stock size is almost a wash, you know, compared to getting a brand new cylinder. Okay, a brand new cylinder from Motorsport with free shipping because it's over $50 is $341.77. The total cost that I spent for the Tavidus cylinder replated was $331.96. That includes uh, almost $12 to ship it to them, almost $25 to ship it back, and like $295 for them to do the work. Now, I saved $10, but was it worth, you know, I waited an extra couple weeks. Uh, this thing shipped out on uh, October 29th and came back to me uh, November the 18th. So it was like, uh, was that 20 days when I could have had a brand new one from Motosport in, you know, a couple days for 10 more dollars and it'd be brand new. But they do really good work and they do oversized bores. So if I was going to bore this thing out and for some reason 2001 doesn't lend itself, something about the design doesn't lend itself to overboring. But if you were going to have you know, a cylinder overboard, you know, that'd be the way to go. Because like I said, they do really good work. There's another company called, I think, US Chrome um, that, that does good work. I haven't used them. I may try them next time to see if they can get the cost down a little more for this. But anyway, that's the story with the, the cylinder. I had two of them. If I would have did two of them, I probably could have saved a bit on shipping and then I would have had a spare because I've got one back there now that's, you know, in, in bad shape. And I could have just sent it out, but it would have cost me another $300 that I didn't really need to spend right now. Anyway, let's put the cylinder head on. I already got mounting brackets back in place. Locating pins are both here. Got a brand new gasket. And a new cylinder head. All right, so we're tightening these in a star pattern. You do not need an adapter here. You do need an extension to get this one in the back. Okay, I've got everything just about back together except basic assembly stuff. I've got to put the gas tank back on, hook the exhaust up, the coolant system, radiators and hoses, and then the plastic. 
but that's pretty boring stuff. I'll spare you that. Let's talk about what I think happened to the motorcycle when it failed the last time. I noticed that when we disassembled the head and the cylinder, that there was a really dark spot in between the um, combustion chamber and the water jacket. And I think we were losing water either through uh, not having the head nuts on tight enough or maybe the head was warped where we had overheated it before and it probably just lost coolant through the combustion chamber. We were basically burning water, or Alex was the day he took it out. And uh, once all the water was gone, then it overheated and seized. So I'm not certain that's what happened, but the fact that there's no water in it and he did put water in it, at least he says he did, that's the only place I could think that it went is out that way and the discoloration is what made me think that. I'm not gonna be able to start this thing up today. So uh, I'm not gonna post the video until I fire it up. So probably be a couple days and uh, we'll see you back then. So I got everything put back together. I've been waiting about a week for the weather to warm up. It's been in the thirties, but it's uh, 60 some right now. So we're gonna try to fire this thing up. I made sure we put enough coolant in it. Last night I put one quart and it's around the quart is what it's supposed to have on a refill. So I'm sure we've got enough coolant in it. I think everything's back together right. Um, got the choke on, gas on, see for fire. So I said the gas was on, the gas was not on. That doesn't help things. <laughs> right now that I got the gas on, let's see if it'll hit. It moved. Sounds weird. That, you hear that tick? Start it up, but it's making a little bit of a noise that I don't particularly like. Maybe a big end bearing. I was hoping those were okay. They felt okay, but maybe not. I think I may take it to a shop and see what they say. I really don't want to split the case to work on the bearings. If that is what it is, I may let the shop do it. So the bike ran, still not sure about the sound it's making. It sounds a little different than the go-kart, 
They basically got the same engine on them. A couple of parts are different. The go-kart doesn't have a kickstarter, doesn't have the power power exhaust valve. But other than that, they're pretty much the same engine. It definitely sounded different whenever it ran last time. Though. And the bike, I don't know, just sounds a little different. So I'm probably gonna take it to the shop, somebody that works on two strokes a lot, and just get their thoughts on it before I ride it in case there is an issue. I don't wanna have to you know, spend more money. Even if I gotta put something in, I don't wanna ruin the new jug and the new piston and whatnot. At least we could salvage that if there is something else wrong with it. Anyway, Alex and I pulled the go-kart out, um, draining the water for the winter. Uh, anything else we need to do? We're gonna spray it down with some WD-40. Mm -hmm. Keep oxidation off of the anodized parts and the aluminum stuff and keep the axle from rusting and all that good stuff. Anyway, uh, soak it down with some WD-40 and uh, really know that there's anything else we need to do for the winter. Um, channel's probably not going to have a whole lot of videos on it because we don't go fast a whole lot in the winter. Not in the winter. Uh, other than going down some ski slopes maybe when Alex gets his leg healed up here. He's got a big cast on it right now. He's got a new snowboard. He bought a new snowboard. Five days. It? Five days before he broke his leg. <laughs> he hasn't rode it yet. He doesn't even have bindings for it yet, but it's in there. It's ready for him as soon as he can get that cast off. Um, got some, I want to go to do the GoPro races next year. We're going to go ride some rental carts down there now that Alex is 16. 16. Cause he's been on the track, but hadn't been in the rental cars. Cause you gotta be 16 to drive the rental cars. he has been on it in a go-kart, but it was his own go-kart. You don't have to be 16 to do that. Um, lots of autocross is coming up. We're going to try to do some bigger events. May go out and do some national level events, maybe a pro. Okay forward to that. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, so, we'll see you.